All right, continuing coverage of NAB 2024. That's what year it is. Yeah, yes. absolutely. We got <laughs> Kyle here. We're here at the Adobe booth. And because uh, this could stand for Adobe and AI. Oh, yes, definitely this year. Absolutely. absolutely. So you guys made lots of AI announcements. Well, of course, AI has been in Adobe products yes. already. Generative fill in Photoshop. Uh, I've been using the text editing in uh, in Premiere Pro, saving things. So when I do something like uh, uh, <laughs> when I do something like that, then I can. I'm not going to edit that out, by the way. Uh, I I can actually fix that, and that's what's really cool about it. You'll but, use it after this interview. Where exactly. I'm, where I'm so well, hopefully we won't need to. So you're on your A game here. I'm you're on, on my your A game. A game here. I'm on my Adobe so, game. Okay, perfect. So tell us. What's going on at Adobe and uh, all that stuff? Absolutely. So it's let me do that again. Tell me what's going on in Adobe. So I would say, as you mentioned, 2024 is the year of AI. We've got a lot of uh, Gen AI AI stories in our video products. We've also got a collaboration story out of Frame.io. So let me take you through Premiere Pro. Lots of content, lots of new innovation that's already uh, in beta in the Premiere Pro beta. We're talking AI-enabled audio workflows. A lot of what we've been hearing from customers is all about how do I work faster and do more of my work inside of Premiere Pro? With all of our AI-enabled audio features, we are bringing the power of audio directly to the timeline, making it easier and faster for editors to do their final mix right inside Premiere Pro. Okay. What, what does that mean? Let's say what does you, that mean? So what, let's say you have a ton of different uh, sound going on in, in your video. You might have dialogue, like we have now. Yeah. You might have sound effects, you might have music. Dealing with each of those, is different. So we have AI-enabled audio category tagging that helps you identify easily what type of uh, audio clip that you have, and then basically gives you access to the tools you need to work with that audio clip faster than ever. We're also bringing fades, automatic uh, fade handles directly inside of the timeline. So you That'll can, be interesting. To see yeah, how that works. easy yeah. fade. You can see the curves right there from the timeline. You don't have to click into a different panel. It's all right there. Is that for dialogue or is that for music or is that? Anything, any anything. type of audio clip that you need to do fades, whether it's cross fades, between clips, anything like that, now available inside of the timeline. Okay. We also, in Premiere Pro, uh, have all of the new Gen AI that we're previewing for early uh, for delivery later this year. We've spent the last year working with professional video editors, understanding what really pains them. What's the tedious type of work that you're doing that we as Adobe could help accelerate through Gen AI? And a lot of what we heard is removing objects from scenes, adding objects to scenes, holding, uh, getting those extra frames that you couldn't catch uh, live in your shoot. Your, at the your end. shirt is causing more Can uh -oh. I fix that? No, yes. that's what is usually a question that happens. Oh, oh, oh yes, is absolutely. I just did a video, but the guy had like stripes on that just completely blew out the uh, the video. Can that be, things like that be fixed? So that's really interesting, yes. So with the concept, I'll just take you through it, but with the concept of object addition and generative fill, we're basically enabling you to replace full objects that you can select from the scene with AI generated objects. So you wanna change the color of my shirt? Go ahead, go right for it. That's that's definitely a use case that we wanna but support. Can I, can I fix the moray without changing the shirt? I would Does say not sense? yet, yeah, but not, okay. not yet, okay. not with these features. Okay. But at a high level, things like object removal. So what are we gonna do to support that? We've heard from pro editors, better masking inside of Premiere Pro. Yes, right? so yes, better, <laughs> yes. Better manual and smart uh, AI-based masking okay. coming to Premiere Pro with this feature. So if you wanna highlight, if you wanna re replace this Adobe A behind us with something different, easy to highlight this with, 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 with simple tools and, and then remove that, replace that, et cetera, and use the surrounding area to fill in, yeah. uh, to fill in that gap. We got, you got the common things, like uh, license plates on cars. Yes, exactly. If we had people walking in the background, it, Boom, like, how, much, my head. how much easier would it be to just sit there and say, if it's not these two faces, blur the heck out of the other faces. Yes, exactly. And, uh, Things yeah. like logos, license plates, you nailed it. Boom exactly. mics coming in from the side. Exactly. Stray coffee cup in Games of Thrones. You know, all that. Stuff. Also, I have generative extend. So let's say you're mm, filming yeah. and you need to hit that music beat and you want that just a couple extra frames to do that. Generative extend will let you use the content, uh, the content of your existing frames in that clip and generate new frames to fill the gap. So it, it won't do a speed adjust, it, it'll actually create frames. Create new frames, yeah. We're okay. not talking about extending the clip further or shrinking. Okay. We're talking about creating net new frames. 
nice. both on video and audio. So another thing that's a challenge is just creating room tone when you're trying to finish that dialogue or add something to it, right? So both video and audio uh, supported with generative extend. And then B-roll, we all know that video needs B-roll, right? And so want to support text to B-roll as well. And this is all going to be powered by Adobe's new Firefly video model. So okay. you talked about all the stuff that's going on in Photoshop. We at Adobe have a, a, a family of, of generative models. So what you're used to in Photoshop is the image model out of Firefly. Yeah. All of the features, the four features that I just talked about supported through the Adobe Firefly video model. Awesome. And that video model is designed to be commercially safe. It means that all of the data that went into training that model is either our own licensed stock content okay. or publicly available content uh, that has had the copyright expire and doesn't have uh, IP. Uh, Metadata issues, yeah. Any issues with trademarks, logos, IP, et cetera. So that's all taken care of and we're designing it to be commercially safe. So there, we could put Winnie the Pooh right here. Or Mickey uh, Mouse, or I'm sorry, Steamboat Willie Mickey Mouse right here. Depends on whether or not that content has IP and copyright trademarks okay. uh, attached to it. But just like you had just mentioned, we know that our editors want choice in yeah. their model. And for a long time, Adobe has had an open ecosystem for Premiere Pro, for After Effects, for others, with third-party plugins, right? Yeah. We know that other that customers are gonna want specific use cases where somebody else puts all the energy to make a perfect tool for that use case. And we think the same is going to happen with Gen AI. There are gonna be models that excel uh, to do one thing versus the other. And at Adobe, we're gonna focus on really broadly applicable use cases. Cool. And so if our editors want to use a specific model for a specific thing that Adobe is not focused on, we wanna make sure that they can use those models inside of Adobe tools. So uh, with our announcements at NAB, uh, we are previewing early explorations with companies like OpenAI with their Sora video model, or Runway ML, and Pika, showing you how you might use those models inside of the workflows that we just described. Okay. So while you might use for, um, Adobe's uh, Firefly video model for text to B-roll, you might also say, actually, for this use case, Sora's model works really well. I want to use Sora use that, for this. Yeah, instead, yeah. So just like we have third-party plugin support, we are exploring early ways to support uh, third-party models inside of Adobe Tools as well. And one of the things we're really proud of is the Content Authenticity Initiative which basically is attaching content, content credentials, which is like a nutrition label for the content you're generating. So whether you're using our model or whether you're using a third party model on Adobe tools, we are committed to attaching content credentials to all of the media that gets generated okay. so that you, feel that you and your viewers feel comfortable to know what, what was this? Was this fully AI generated? What model was used to generate this? Was this was just part of this uh, piece of media generated with AI? So even with uh, the third party models that we're exploring within uh, Adobe Tools, we intend to support content credentials on those as well. When Photoshop first had the uh, generative uh, AI yep. in there, I did a video where I s sat in front of my desk and then I pushed it out, and then I pushed it out, and I pushed it out, and I pushed it out, and I yep. pushed it out, till you didn't even see me anymore. It went through houses, it went through uh, countryside, oh, all that other cool. good stuff. It was a little bit framey, but uh, it, it was just the, the basic idea. Now, by bringing that video factor in, yes. now I can say, uh, zoom out in a 60 frame, in a 30 frame, whatever uh, so, situation. So, so your experiences and the, and the conversations that we've had with our community is exactly, they were using the Firefly image model to try to do video, right? Yeah. And there absolutely are applications for that, but we want to make that faster, easier, and more tailored to exactly what you're doing with the Firefly video model. Okay. So one thing we haven't talked about today yet is Frame.io. Uh, oh, absolutely. Before we do that, yes. really quick, do we need a beefier computer at this point? Uh, and what, uh, are the specs going to change? It's uh, a great question. The, I, I wouldn't comment on that just yet. Uh, however, I think what you've seen with us with our image model is some of the some of the stuff we do on device, some of the stuff we send to the cloud. Yeah. So if you have a cloud connection, you know uh, that that can always uh, support uh, kind of what you're doing on device okay. versus what you're doing on. Cloud. Okay, perfect. Now let's talk about version four yes. of Frame IO. This is, this is pretty exciting. I don't do too much Frame IO, but I know that it's it's all about being able to collaborate around around yes. the world, whether it's live video, yes. whether it's uh, whether it's photos, editing, coloring, whatever, and that's where Frame.io really will shine. Yeah, Frame.io comes in uh, and has historically been positioned as a video review and approval tool, right? Mm -hmm. And with Frame.io v4, which is the latest version of our platform that got released to beta last week, 
We're uh, transforming Frame.io from a review and approval tool to a full creative management platform. Frame.io, historically, you can upload your, your content at blazing speeds, share it with customers, through uh, clients, internal folks, through review links, or bring them, bring them into your project. Um, but what we're introducing with V4 is an entirely new metadata system. So you might want to basically move your creative through an entire workflow okay. that might be like progressive levels of uh, approvals. You might want to uh, basically have workflows for casting where you're saying, hey, let me only show the head of casting uh, people who have rated five out of star rating once I've done the, the casting yeah. shoot. Yeah. So we have an unlimited amount of metadata fields, a few out of the box uh, that you can use, but add all of your own to basically create these customized dynamic workflows based on the metadata that you're logging within Frame.io. Okay. Whether that's scene, take, cut, day, uh, or ratings, or needs exec level approval versus needs internal team approval. Um, this metadata framework really supports a very compelling dynamic workflow. We've also rebuilt every single pixel from the ground up. Wow. So it's taken us three years, but everything is fluid, it is beautiful, and it really makes it a very compelling uh, workflow for okay. you and your clients. Yeah, because that makes sense because uh, Frame.io was a separate company at one time, when, and with the merge, there's always got to be you know, some little intricacies that need to be uh, uh, locked in. So Fine by too. doing this, you can create the jigsaw puzzle and put it together. Absolutely. We have integrations today with Premiere Pro. We also have it with third parties like Resolve. Um, V4, we intend to support all of that as well. Uh, and the share flows, I mean, you just got to try to share. Like, if you want to look like a professional editor or a professional designer, the share flows are going to put your work on the best platform. Uh, awesome. It looks drop dead gorgeous. Uh, and then again, yes, we have Camera to Cloud. If you haven't tried Camera to Cloud, basically you're able to uh, shoot right from the show floor stream it to uh, your editor who could be a world away, and they can get started uh, right now cutting in Premiere Pro. And I'm gonna be trying that uh, in the next couple of weeks to really uh, get, get, get an idea of how that works because that's part of my workflow is to do uh, live editing. And even though I w the, my idea is not as much I'm somewhere else, but as I'm somewhere else in the event, sure. so I can be behind a, behind a, a production booth where I can put on headphones, where if there's a band playing, I don't have to, I, I can actually hear the audio that's coming in so I can make the adjustments, I make see. the camera moves, and then nobody has to be in the crowd. Oh, that's really exciting. One last thing we haven't touched on is yeah. After Effects. So, oh, yeah. uh, obviously a lot, of, a lot of content today, a lot of products are, are being marketed through video, and a lot of those products have 3D models powering what the actual product looks like versus you know just taking a photo of it. It gives your team a lot more uh, ability to uh, do many, many iterations beyond what you might capture in a photo shoot. Yeah. So we know 3D models are more and more important. And working at, uh, having a 3D model added to a promotional video that you might be working on in After Effects, really cumbersome to change things like animation, speed of animation, all of those things. So we're making it a lot easier in After Effects to work with 3D models. So you don't have to make iterations in the, in the 3D tool and then bring it back into After Effects. You can do things like animation timings, turning on and off animations a lot simpler and easier in your 2D workspace in After Effects. For my um, After Effects knowledge and, and use, uh, basically it, I, I like to do like lower thirds and, sure. and things like that. So that that's where Premiere Pro is just, it's fine. But bringing in, bring in an After Effects so I could actually make lower thirds that I can constantly use with my logo, with yeah. my look. Uh, that's that's where that uh, something like uh, After Effects will really shine for me. Yeah, absolutely. And I know other people are doing like tracking and, and all that other stuff. So, uh, <laughs> There's a wide gamut of use cases. For exactly. After Effects exactly. Specifically. So, wow. That so it's it's just amazing what we'll be able to do with our videos. All right. Well, lots of great stuff here. I can't wait to try it. Uh, it's in beta right now, which is downloadable, right? So the audio uh, AI enabled audio workflows uh, in Premiere downloadable in beta. The After Effects stuff already available in the shipping product of okay. After Effects. Okay. Frame.io v4 also in beta. And then all the new generative workflows inside of Premiere, Object Edition, Removal, Generative Extend, Text to B roll, that's coming later this year. Kyle, thank you very much for your time. Yes, thanks, Jeff. Lots of great stuff at Adobe here. Getting in AI, Adobe. I mean, it's, you just put an eye right here and you're good to go. So. Lots of great stuff here at NAV 2024. Lots of more videos from Geekazine over at geekazine.com, youtube.com forward slash geekazine, where you can like, subscribe, comment, hit the bell notification so that you know those YouTubers get their wings by doing that.
check everything out. And until next time, you guys geek out and AI on with Adobe. <laughs>